What's up, Think International? Thinking Now for Tomorrow, bringing you the best and brightest leaders. And I'm here with singer, songwriter, recording artist, worship leader, Michael Lighty. How you doing, Michael? Good, man. Hey, it's awesome. good to be here with you. Definitely. It's a blast. Yeah. Yeah. We're having a great conference here in Marysville, Washington, Jake's house. And we just wanted to talk to uh, you about a few things going on at your church and about a lot of things for just creatives in general, some yeah. worship leader stuff, but general creative stuff uh, in the creative process. So how, uh, how did you though get started in, in music and singing and worship? Um, my brother actually, actually, actually my dad, who's here, I don't know where he is. He was playing all the instruments. He actually, um, I got started growing up around him. He had, uh, I mean, just guitars, uh, instruments all over the house. You know, he plays. We counted it one day. It was like, you know, 14 different instruments that he plays. And I think recently it's a saxophone he just picked up. He does woods, strings, anything, you know. So um, then my brother actually in high school picked up the guitar. Uh, he wanted to write songs for a girl, and uh, which is pretty normal. And so I thought, well, let's pick up the bass guitar and get into this music thing, and I'll back up my brother. So for years, I just backed up my brother leading worship uh, in all his gigs and all the things that he did and plugged in at my community. And uh, when I was in Bible college, uh, I started leading worship, and it just kind of took off from there. So I've had the opportunity now... Um, uh, because of you know just some of the things that God's done, I've led worship you know um, Europe and Asia and India and uh, gosh all over the place. So it's a, it's been a blast. So wow. Now uh, you even mentioned during one of the sets here that one day you were standing in the shower and a melody came to you and a song began to came to you. And right, actually on the new CD that we did, um, we were getting ready to record a certain song. Uh, and I was in the shower getting ready in the morning and I was thinking about that song and another melody just kind of popped in my head and uh, so we sat down with the guys in the studio I says hey you know check this out and they go, well let's make a song out of this you know so we just right there in the studio just dropped the song and so I actually had to write the words we had all the music done you know we think well this should be a verse here and well let's go to the chorus and you know here's the chorus but we don't have any verses or bridge or anything but here we'll just make room for it and then so I spent the next like three weeks back in Vegas writing actually writing the song so so. Sure, sure. And, and creatives in general, a lot of times stuff like that happens. These ideas pop in their head, these things pop in their head. And you mentioned a little bit about the process. What are some practical things you do when you get an idea to make sure that it goes from just being there and never happening to actually happening? Right, the iPhone. That's it. Voice memos, yeah. Voice memos all the time. I mean, I've got, my phone has like hundreds of voice memos of little melodies I get. I'll get, you know, ideas even today like we did, you know, I, we got done with the meeting. I went home and tried to take a nap. I'm getting melodies. Sure. You know, most of the time when I go home after a service like, you know, where God's in the mix, you know, like my brain doesn't stop. The creative stuff doesn't stop. So I have to write it down or else... I mean, for years, I would get stuff like that and go, oh, I'll just remember in the morning, you know, and I never did. Sure. You know what I mean? So I just instantly, I'm like, write it down, write down the melody or sing the melody or whatever, you know, I'll use it later. And if not, not a big deal, you know, it doesn't, right. you know, some of them, they just, they disappear. But if it, if it haunts me for like three, four days, then I know there's something on it and I need to like push into that and make room for that. Like whatever it is, whether it's a song, whether it's an idea or whatever, like I've got a couple business ideas that I've been cooking on and like I get ideas all the time. I'm a creative guy, you know what I mean? Uh, but it's like, if it haunts me, I know like, I think God's breathing on it. You know what I mean? If there's yeah. like this divine pressure on it to like move into it, then I think that there's something to that, you know? But most of this stuff, it just, it goes away. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Love it. Love it. Okay. So uh, you're also, you're a prophetic uh, flow guy. Mm -hmm. You can just be in a flow. And uh, do you know of uh, Jason Upton mm -hmm. and uh, Rick Pino? Mm -hmm. Who who do you think, because uh, Jason Upton kind of had it for a while. He still does, but he kind of, he was sort of a guy flowing. And then Rick Pino shows up on the scene. Now, if they were to have to settle things in like a cage fight, like just an all out, who do you think is going to win between Rick Pino and Jason <laughs> Upton? Good question. Um, they're, they're both actually, uh, Rick's, Rick's a better friend of, to, uh, of mine than Jason is, but I, I know Jason and, and uh, you know, I think Rick would probably take him. He's a big dude. <laughs> he kind of looks like Jack Black. I don't yes. know if you noticed. That's what they said, the Christian Jack Black. The Christian Jack Black. He gets it all the time. He actually plays it really well. And so now when he's in airports, and he was telling me when he's in airports and people come up and ask him, he just says, he just pretends, you know. Sure. So, yeah, I don't know. I think, uh, 
Rick's definitely got the rock edge. Yeah. You know, he's he's bringing the he's bringing the heaviness. Yeah. You know, Jason's more on probably the more meditative side. Right. Uh, a little softer in his music uh, musical approach. You know, but I enjoy both actually. Sure. Uh, Upton's new record from Dublin just rocks my boat. Yeah. You know, I love it. I just got it and just been soaking on that. So, I enjoy both of those guys. In fact. Uh, Rick was the I, I used Rick's engineer to get my CD done. Oh, cool! Yeah, so I'm pumped. So awesome. Rick's sound is enormous. I mean, the dude's a, he's a freak. So love it, love it. Now writer's block, something that whether you're you know doing art, painting, music, whatever you're doing, happens. You ever get writer's block? Yeah, um, and and honestly, I don't I don't pay it too much mind if it comes. I just I stop where I'm at. You know what I mean? Like I don't feel necessarily like. You know, with that, that song we wrote in the studio, it was kind of one of those deals I needed to get it done because I had to go back and like mix the record. So I did feel like this in, in, amount of pressure on it. But like I've never really, I've never really had, you know, and I know like in different, in different, you know, fields and stuff like creative, you know, creative writers or video people or graphics guys, they've got these deadlines. And the thing with the, the songwriting is there isn't really any deadline for me. So sure. I can totally take, I can take a month off from a song and, and just leave it in the leave it in the book, you know, and I don't have to pull it out until, you know, until there's actually, uh, you know, kind of a, a push on it by the Lord, you know what I mean? So, but some things, you know, like you want to get it done, you feel like there's something on it and it needs to kind of come out, yeah. you know. Um, what I do is, you know, my, my gig songwriting, so like, I just sing the melody until words come. And honestly, like, that's pretty much it, dude. Yeah, I love <laughs> honestly, that's great. If it's singable, you know what I mean? Like, then that's, you know. Now, you lead worship at International Church in Las Vegas, and you guys have what's called Spark for creatives, not just worship leaders, but creatives across the board. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, we need, we just, uh, you know, it's been in our hearts for years to kind of develop uh, some sort of a place for the creative community to just kind of come and be, learn, grow together, be family, do life, uh, a safe environment um, to, to try and fail. And uh, so we just, we, it's an experiment really. You know, it's like, uh, sometimes it's like having five or six, you know, cats in one room, you know what I mean? Like, it, it doesn't really work, you know what I mean? Like, it's just this friction and it's just like, in, you know, incredibly difficult. and. Um, but we're like a family, you know, we've got, um, we've got 12 students and, and we just, it really, we launched it this year and just didn't really know what was going to happen. And these people started showing up and saying, Hey, I'm a creative. What can, you know, yeah. is there room for me? Really? Is there room for what I've got? You know? And I think, I think one of the needs that I'm seeing, one of the greatest needs in the, in the, in the Christian community is to find those people that understand the creative mind, heart, wiring, cause we're wired totally different than everybody else and be able to, uh, and be able to uh, pastor them and really like uh, give people this that room to uh, to grow and find their way and to uh, to try and fail. You know what I mean? So I think there's a lot of there's a lot of rumblings. There's a lot of sh there's a lot of stuff around the creative community that people don't understand. There's a bunch of books written. So there are some communities that are really pushing into it and and really like reaching out into the you know into that creative thing to to make room and make space. And I think people are doing a great job, you know. But it's definitely a generational thing. Sure. I think that you know our generation's got to be one of the most creative on the earth. You know, besides maybe the Renaissance, you know, and I, I feel like there's another Renaissance happening. Yeah. You know, there's this emergent, you know, community of people that are just, you know, this is the way we were wired. And for years, you know, my friends were, uh, they put on drugs and all kinds of stuff because they were just, they learned fast and they, you know, they were just, they were quick. And so we had to, they had to be dumbed down to fit into the traditional um, educational system. Sure, sure. So, you know, I think we're trying to reinvent education. We're trying to re reinvent, like, um, uh, development, artistic development. You know, and it's, like a, and it's an experiment. It's never been done before. You know, so we don't have people that we can, oh, yeah, you know, we could just take from these guys. Because, no, we don't really know what... We, we don't really know what we're looking for. We just know we haven't found it yet. Sure, you sure. I mean? Absolutely. And you teach there, right? Mm-hmm. And so, uh, if you were to have the question in class, you know, you've been doing this for, for quite a while now, what's one principle on worship that you wish you would have known, or just songwriting that would have helped you had you known it back at the beginning or, or 10 years ago? Dude, I know, you, uh, this is loaded. Um, there's so much, you know. I think 
one of the things is like moving from, you know, and, and you know, unfortunately we've got our American idols, you know, and, and uh, everybody seems to be really into that. But like, I, I think like as, you know, as musicians, as artistic people, we're called to, to be leaders as well. And so it was a big transition for me going from being a singer songwriter, being a performer or someone that actually does music, plays music, um, to now learning that I'm in charge of helping set the stage for a community to have an encounter with Jesus. So, so my role at this point is to foster the worship life of my community. Yeah. It's not just to like play my tunes and to be a band and you know a lot of people do the worship band thing and that's cool I guess if you're into that but like like for me the big thing was like learning like I'm a pastor now like I'm in ch I'm you know not in the traditional role like I'm a pastor you know and I gotta wear a suit and tie but like no I am leading a community like I I am I am setting the stage I am going before a community saying hey guys I, I banged it out in my prayer closet I know what God wants to say for my community and and I, I why don't you come with me? So for for years it was really difficult. I thought I was I thought I was pretty nuts because like you know Wednesday I'm doing great. Thursday I'm in like the pits of depression, you know. And I thought it was my stuff. So I'm just like God, what's going on, you know? And then I'd get to church on Sunday and it's like I feel it in the atmosphere. I go, oh my gosh, it's not that I'm a total nutcase. It's that. Maybe God made me to be a kind of a prophetic guy so I would know what my community needs. So I know how to pray into my community. I know what kind of songs we need to be declaring. I know what, uh, what kind of worship that we need to, that's gonna bring us into that breakthrough. You know what I mean? To get us out of ourselves. So I began to find like, there was these deals in my life that were happening and I'm going, maybe it's not about me. Like maybe there was something that God was wanting to do as a leader in my community like he's gonna speak to me first, so I'm equipped to know how to like bring breakthrough for my community. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's, yeah. it's, it's just a, such a different dynamic and I think that's probably one of the biggest things that I've learned, you know, doing worship over the last, you know, 10, 12 years or whatever it's yeah. been. That's awesome, all right, lastly, um, if people wanna get your CDs, what CDs do you have out, uh, websites, Twitters, places like that, where are you at? Um, well, uh, iTunes, great, easy spot, uh, Facebook, you can reach me there. Um, uh, website's michaellighty.com. It's pretty pretty straightforward. Yep. I have two CDs out. Um, I've done a number of projects with the church, and those are available on our church website, iclv.com. Um, but my, my solo projects, um, I have two two records. One is more of a meditative instrumental. Well, there's a lot of instrumental. There are, there are songs on there, but uh, it's real more meditative worship, kind of uh, background music for your personal devotion time. And then the new one, uh, Your Kingdom Come, is a studio project we did with, with Rick's team, Rick's guys down in Dallas. And, um, um, and it's a blast. It's anthems that we've been singing at our church, you know, and uh, some old stuff, some new stuff. It was cool. I got to bring in a new band. You know, my band's great, but, like, it was cool to be able to have fresh ears on my project, you know, so they brought a fresh life into someone's song. Hey, why don't we do this here? And, you know, let's change these chords. And what if we move this? You know, so it added a real kind of a new breath on some of the oldies, you know, that that we've been, you know, our community at least has been accustomed to. So sure. it's a blast. All right. Well, yeah. well, uh, thank you so much for the interview. Yeah. And, and uh, Think International, Michael Lighty, pick up his CDs, check out the websites and stuff. Thinking now for tomorrow. See you later. Yeah.